Jojen Paste is a Game of Thrones fan theory claiming that Bran eats Jojen. Which sounds crazy, but may actually be true, so let's have a look. In Season 4 of Game of Thrones and Book 5 of A Song of Ice and Fire, Bran Stark travels north, with Jojen, Mira, Hodor, and in the books, Cold Hands, a mysterious walking corpse. They go to the home of the Three-Eyed Crow, or Blood Raven, a dreamer, wizard, and greenseer connected to the weirwoods and the children of the forest and the magic of the old gods. The point of all this, apparently, is for Blood Raven to teach Bran to use the magic power of the old gods, the powers of a greenseer. So in Dance, we get a sort of a training montage, kind of like Luke Skywalker's training in Star Wars. Amongst darkness and twisted tree roots, an old but powerful mentor trains a young hero to unlock his mystical powers. Bran learns to see into the past through the eyes of weirwood trees, and to better skin change, enter the minds of animals. As part of this training, Blood Raven and the Children of the Forest give Bran a bowl of white paste, apparently made out of weirwood seeds. It's thick and heavy, with dark red veins running through it that look remarkably like blood. Apparently the purpose of this paste is to help awaken Bran's gifts and wed him to the trees. So Bran eats it, then has a vision through the eyes of a weirwood tree. Afterwards, he finds Jojen and Mira curiously absent. He then has more visions, and the chapter ends, and that's the last we've seen of Bran. So the Jojen paste theory claims that the weirwood paste that Bran eats actually contains the blood or body of Jojen. So, what's the evidence? Firstly, the tone of this whole chapter is really, really dark and ominous. Its imagery includes dead men, dark clouds, blood stew, murders of crows, chambers of bones, a talking corpse, and whispers in the dark. It's like a Halloween haunted house in here. There's particular emphasis on flesh and blood and knives. The line, the moon was a crescent, thin and sharp as the blade of a knife, appears four times in this chapter as the phases of the moon are used to track the passage of time. So the tone and imagery of this chapter really set the scene for something bad to happen. Maybe something involving knives and flesh and blood. And it's strongly implied that something bad is going to happen to Jojen. Of course in the show, Jojen is already dead. He's stabbed, then mercy killed, then blown up by a child of the forest, because apparently that's what you do. But in the books, Jojen survives the whites, and while Bran trains, he mopes around Bloodraven's cave, growing ever more sullen and solitary. Food and rest improve his physical health after their journey, but he seems sadder now, sullen, with a weary, haunted look about the eyes. At one point, he implies that he has reason to be afraid. And this seems to be related to his green sight, his prophetic dreams of the future. Mira says Jojen will not even try and fight his fate. He says that green dreams do not lie. Jojen has hinted that he's foreseen his own death in his dreams. So what seems to be going on here is that Jojen is upset because he knows his death is coming. Why might Jojen have to die? Jojen's job is to bring Bran to Bloodraven, so Bloodraven can teach Bran to use the magic of the old gods. But magic in A Song of Ice and Fire is not some Harry Potter swish and flick bullshit. Magic in this world is messy and ugly, and it often has a price. When Daenerys uses magic to try to keep Drogo alive, the price is the life of a horse and of Danny's unborn child. Melisandre needs king's blood and the burning of innocence to work her magic. Euron Greyjoy makes blood sacrifices to make his ship sail faster. And there are many other examples from many different cultures across the world of ice and fire of the need for human sacrifice, or blood sacrifice, in magic. So it makes a lot of sense that awakening Bran's magic would also require human sacrifice, especially when we're talking about the magic of the old gods. We're told repeatedly that Northmen used to make human sacrifices to the weirwoods, and the Scargosi apparently still do. Further, Bran's last vision in this chapter is of a woman slashing a captive's throat before a weirwood tree, and as his life flows out of him in a red tide, Bran can taste the blood. So in the same chapter where Bran eats this suspiciously bloody weirwood paste to awaken his magic, we're reminded of the connections between the magic of the old gods and the weirwoods and human sacrifice. Further, with human sacrifice and blood magic, one person's blood can be more powerful than another's. For example, Melisandre specifically needs king's blood for her most powerful magic, this might explain why Jojen's blood is needed, rather than Mira's or Hodor's, because while Jojen isn't a fully-fledged greenseer like Bloodraven, he does have green dreams, prophetic dreams, and special moss-green eyes that mark his gift. Jojen has the power of the old gods in his blood, 
so it makes sense that his sacrifice specifically has the power to awaken Bran's magic. Another thing that's going on here, if Jojen Paste is real, is cannibalism. And cannibalism is a recurring theme in the North. Stannis' starving soldiers eat their own fallen, Wyman Manderley bakes Freys into pies, Varamir eats human flesh while walked into his wolf, and cannibalism, especially unknowing cannibalism, is a recurring theme specifically in Bran's chapters. When Bran is at the Night Fort, he recalls the tale of the rat cook who cooked an Andal prince in a pie and served him to his father, then was cursed to live as a rat, eating his own young. In the Cave of the Three-Eyed Crow, Bran and co. eat suspicious meat that might be squirrel or rat or maybe something else. And when Bran is travelling north, Coldhands feeds him the flesh of some night's watchman and tells him that it's pork. Also, like Faramir, Bran eats human flesh while walked into his wolf. So Bran has already eaten human meat. Snacking on some Jojen would be just one more example of cannibalism in his chapters. Further, on the journey north, Bran and co. eat Cold Hand's elk, which Bran feels guilty about because he considers the elk a friend. So Bran has not only already been eating human flesh, but he's already been eating his friends. So the pieces are starting to come together. This chapter is really dark and ominous, it's strongly hinted that something bad will happen to Jojen, it makes sense that Bran's magical awakening would require blood sacrifice, and cannibalism is a theme of Bran's chapters. It looks like, maybe, Bloodraven and the Children of the Forest secretly kill Jojen and put his blood in the weirwood paste that they feed to Bran in order to awaken Bran's magic. But does that fit with what we know of Bloodraven? Bloodraven doesn't exactly seem like a good guy. Just look at him. He's a 125-year-old half-corpse and half-tree, with weirwood roots snaking in and out of his withered flesh. He's less a man than some ghastly statue made of twisted wood, old bone, and rotted wool. He lives in a cave full of creepy forest elf children and the bones of thousands dead. His home is literally littered with human skulls. And look at the shit he says, never fear the darkness, Bran. Darkness will make you strong. To return to the Star Wars comparison, Bloodraven is much less like Yoda than he's like Vader or the Emperor. He's dark, seductive, manipulative, and deceptive. Bran thought Bloodraven would be a wise old wizard who could fix his legs. He never signed up to become a psychic tree. And what about Jojen, Mira, and Hodor? What's going to happen to them? They can hardly return to the wall with winter setting in. Maybe Bloodraven has good reasons for all this. Leif says he works for us, for you, for the realms of men. But even if that's true, Bloodraven really doesn't seem to have Bran, Jojen, Mira, and Hodor's best interests at heart. He risks their lives bringing them to his cave, he never explains what it is that he wants, and he's turning Bran into something that he never wanted to become. If sacrificing Jojen was necessary for Bloodraven's goals, it's easy to believe that he'd do it. Finally, this theory could fit well with Bran's character arc. Bran starts the story as a boy who dreams of being a heroic knight like in the fairy tales, just like Sansa dreams of becoming a noble lady. Both of these characters get what they wish for. Sansa courts a prince in the royal castle, and Bran journeys into danger in search of a magical power. But Sansa soon realises that the world she dreamed of is actually pretty terrible. Joffrey's a monster, and Cersei's a, quote, vile, scheming, evil bitch. Bran is starting to make a similar realisation. Coldhands is a monster, and the mystical three-eyed crow is actually a creepy half-corpse tree man. Maybe part of this disillusionment for Bran will be the horrific discovery that he ate his friend. And there are a bunch of interesting ways that could go. Maybe, after finding out, Bran would try to get away from Bloodraven, which might be difficult for someone who can't walk, or maybe he'll embrace the darkness anyway. Bran has done some pretty messed up stuff lately, like walking into Hodor all the time, even though it clearly makes Hodor distressed. However bad this Bloodraven stuff is, it empowers Bran, at a time when he's frustrated by his helplessness. Maybe he'd be too immersed in his greenseer power to notice or care about the death of Jojen. Another interesting factor here is that Bran has a crush on Mira. How would Mira react to Jojen's death, and how would Bran react to Mira? And what will happen to poor Hodor? There are lots of different ways this could work, but the point is that Jojen Paste could fit into Bran's story in some really interesting ways, possibly as part of a turn towards darkness. So, is there any strong direct evidence that Bran eats Jojen? No. There's no strong evidence against it either. But here's what we do know. 
In an extremely dark and ominous chapter, it's strongly implied that Jojen knows his death is coming. Bran eats a suspiciously bloody weirwood paste, and afterwards Jojen and Mira seem to be gone. The paste is meant to awaken Bran's magic power, and we know blood sacrifice is often needed to work magic, especially the magic of the old gods and the weirwoods. Cannibalism is a recurring theme in Bran's chapters, with Bran having already eaten the flesh of humans and of friends. Bloodraven is a creepy, nasty dude who seems willing to put his goals above the safety of others, and Bran's story seems to be heading towards a confrontation with the darkness. So there's nothing concrete here, but the pieces do seem to fit. It seems very plausible, likely even, that Bran unknowingly eats Jojen in Bloodraven's weirwood paste. Thanks for watching, and thanks to all supporters on Patreon, including Xandria Leonard, Mr. Fifa SA, Cameron Weiss, Vineyard Dog, Michael Appel, Ziad Eloquy, Staffio the Seventh, Jason Rattray, and Madeline Cockrell. Thanks to your support, Old Shift X is now going full time, which means there'll be many more videos starting in the coming weeks. So again, thank you, and please comment to let me know what you'd like to see from Old Shift X next. Cheers.